Wednesday, April 17th, and it's about 5.30 in the morning, just here in my home office. Actually getting ready to head over to the airport, because i got to fly to San Diego today, just for the day. I'll fly back tonight, and um, I think what I want to talk about on this video is how to piss people off, and why that's a good thing for your business. <laughs> So I'm going to the airport because I got to go to San Diego this morning. And I used to think, wow, look at that sunrise. I don't know if you can see that in the distance. It's pretty dope. Doesn't really do it justice, but it's pretty rad. So I used to think when I was, I don't know, a wannabe entrepreneur or just a, a dreamer, that traveling uh, a lot would be cool. And it is cool. Dude, my, <laughs> my, my, my key, my little key thing, my thing that unlocks my door, it's broken, it broke yesterday. So I gotta like, do this manually. I used to think traveling a lot would be cool. And it is cool, to a degree. But it also gets really old really fast. I, I am on a plane at least twice a month, and that's weird because I told my wife at the end of 2018 that I wanted to do a lot less travel, but it just never pans out that way. There's always a place to go. I'm on my way. I'm just going for the day. I'm actually 15, 12 minutes behind. I'm just going for the day to San Diego. I'm going to fly back tonight. Uh, I'm also a part of a, a group. Many of you guys who watch this probably are aware or familiar with, with it, uh, IAOA, which is a, um, a group just for insur independent insurance agency owners. And so we do an event every year and we'll have about a thousand people at our next event in January. So we're going to look at the hotel in San Diego just to kind of get you know an idea, meet with our AV guys, um, gonna do some you know, planning and whatnot, but yeah, just day trip, there and back. I do love San Diego though. San Diego is my favorite city in all of California. It's pretty rad. I think the most underutilized tactic, I don't know if I would even call it a tactic, but the most underutilized aspect of most people's personal branding and marketing is their fear of offending people, their fear of being controversial. Look, we live in a freaking amazing world where I can connect with you with this camera on a platform like Facebook or YouTube or wherever, and you get to know me. You get to know my personality, you get to know who I am, you get to know the insides of my life, the things that we're doing. That's really cool. And with that, comes an opportunity with that comes an opportunity to check this out hold on this is why Sacramento International Airport is my favorite airport ever this is the best airport to fly in and out of I'm not just saying that because I'm from here but check this out this is the airport look at this there's nobody ever here it's like brand new and nobody's ever here it's clean and it's empty it's awesome Anyways, anyways, what was I saying? So we have the ability to connect and with that comes the opportunity to segment and properly categorize people in your audience. Not everybody's gonna be a buyer, not everybody's gonna be a customer and you have to be okay with that. And so what you wanna do is you wanna attract people and I think people are afraid of using controversy because they think, well, you know, I don't want to offend people, and that's all noble and good, but what you're really doing is you're preventing people who really need to rally behind who you are in personality and what you offer. You limit them, and you don't give them an opportunity to do that. You don't give them an opportunity to be your cheerleader and your greatest brand evangelist. 
I want you to think about a couple recent examples of where controversy has been beneficial. Take a guy like Donald Trump. Now, whenever we think about controversy, his name is always brought up. The dude's the president of the United States. Hey, he won on a platform of controversy. Whether you agree with that controversy or not, it worked really, really well for him. And so, what he's done, what controversy allows you to do, is allows you to gain massive attention and eyeballs. And when you get more eyeballs on you, that's a good thing. It could be a bad thing, but it's also a really, really good thing. I think whenever we think about controversy, we automatically assume that's political, that because that's so easy, it's the low-hanging fruit, that controversy is a red Make America Great Again hat. And sometimes it is, but 99% of the time, it's not. Controversy isn't just saying things that piss people off. Controversy is also throwing rocks at different injustices, throwing rocks at societal norms, throwing rocks at positions, popular positions that people might have or assumptions or biases that your marketplace has when it comes to a product, a service, a company, a brand, a way of life. And when you take strong positions on these things that go against the norm, that's when you win. I remember, uh, this is a line that I heard a million times growing up as a kid, and it was, any dead fish can float downstream, it takes one with a backbone to go against the flow. And that's true, right? When you show that you have a backbone, you become the leader in the audience. When you say the things that everybody thinks, but nobody wants to say because they're afraid, then you automatically rise uh, up the hierarchy, you know, the, the, you know, think of a hierarchy and a ladder, you automatically climb the rungs of that ladder to where you are the one that people are looking for, for opinions, for advice, for, they want to know what you have to say on a particular topic. And when you have that attention, you've got something very, very powerful. So don't just think about controversy as, uh, you know, bad, or don't even think about it as something that's singular in thought, in that it's just political because it's not. It could be a number of different things. And if you embrace that, you'll have incredible success in whatever it is that you're trying to market or however it is that you're trying to position yourself online or to your audience. Sacramento is one of my favorite airports, but San Diego is one of the worst airports. We get out horribly. Everybody's like on top of each other. The terminals are just not very good. We'll make do. Look at this. Everybody's on top of each other. problem that a lot of your audience is going to have once you start taking controversial stands on things or once you start presenting some form of controversy in your branding is most people, this is a good thing and a bad thing, it's a two-edged sword, most people don't know how to distinguish the individual from the singular idea. Case in point, you'll have a position on something, you'll take a stance on something, You'll say something, you'll do something. It's a thought. It's one thought in a billion thoughts that you have. Yet, the simpletons in your audience will only associate you and everything that you are, that you do, with that one thought. It's annoying on one end, but it's good on the other because it's that one thought that gets them out of the, uh, out of the population. So if you're spending money on ads, or if you're doing organic content, you know how to uh, segment and segregate based on who your buyers are, who the audience is. Check it out, that's our hotel. Boom, I don't know if you can see in the background. It's pretty cool, that's, that's, the, that's the hotel right there. So, anyways, I was waiting for my ride. So don't be afraid to do that. 
know that that's gonna be the, the risk that you take and that you're gonna always be associated with that one thought, more than likely. And depending on how deep it is, it's gonna be how long that thought lasts with people. In a world that's, you know, runs on a 24 hour news cycle, it can fade away fast, or depending on how deep you go, can stay with you for a long time. And that's a good thing, and it's a bad thing. But it's still important and still needed. Yeah, yeah, yo, that's yeah, fine. What's up, what's up, I like. What's going on? Hi. Get the whole back seat. I get the whole back seat. Oh, Dave, Dave, what's going on? Dave Jackson? <laughs> Boom! Live? Uh, no. Oh, cool. you got GoPro. Yeah. When you travel, you're subject to everybody else's Wi-Fi. So I'm here at the hotel at the Sheraton, and I've been stuck on this screen for a few moments. Oh, it's acting. It's doing something. I have our weekly video call with our major book students. It's our alpha call. We do it every Wednesday. Uh, basically what I do is I just kind of get into their stuff. Uh, it's done with you. I, I jump into their accounts. I jump into their scripts. I jump into everything that they're doing and try to help them. And we do it via video. It's a video program. But, oh, here we go. I think it's working. I see my face. That's me. Hopefully this goes okay. I scared you. Yeah, well, I was talking back like what could, what could pop up, you know? <laughs> that's good. That's, that's... Well, yeah. I mean, so, do you have a lighting panel in one space with, with, that does everything? Uh, that's a good question. I haven't played around with these enough to really know. Everything would, I, I would think we would have to bring them all. It's very serious. It's very serious right now. So, probably... How close you get? <laughs> <laughs> Captain Dave Jackson in the house. Look at that. He's like a he's like a, a, a wild animal found in his natural habitat. He's got his surface tablet on the phone. Making deals. Look at him. So a couple of things about when you want to post something controversial, a couple of best practices. Number one, you don't do it all the time. Maybe 10% of your posts, 10% of your content is a better way of putting it. 10% of your content, one out of 10 pieces, you can do something controversial. Another best practice for you is, I hope you guys can hear me, it's loud, look how loud this is. out there. So another best practice for your content is you don't have to be so specific about the controversial stuff. What you want to do is you want to post something that is generic and broad enough that people are going to fill in their own gaps. People are going to fill in and think what they want to think. You don't have to give away the good stuff right up front. So if you're posting on Facebook, let's say you're doing a video on Facebook, you can be broad in what you say, and that's fine. And then when given the opportunity and when given the chance, you can be a little bit more, uh, you, can, you can add in a little bit more nuance. You can bring the humanity to what you're saying. And that's gonna be very helpful because if you just try to give all that stuff up front, it's not going to have the same effect. So, allow people to fill in their own gaps and to think what they want to think. That'll be very helpful. The last thing I'll say on this is stand by what you say. Stand by it. You don't backpedal. You don't delete stuff. You don't let people bully you out of thinking what you think. If you believe something, and you believe it to the core of your being, then stand by that. 
even if it's not popular. What makes you look weak to your audience, what makes you look weak in your branding and your marketing, is when you let people dictate to you what you need to do and what you need to think. So don't do that. You're gonna get a lot of heat on the stuff that you do. People are gonna tell you that you're wrong. They're gonna label you. They're gonna call you all kinds of names. That's fine. Take it. No. Just.